Hello, welcome to the Cathedral of Christ the Light. I'm Deacon Tony Santos, and with me today is Father Matthew Murray, who comes from? Danville, California. What parish? St. Isidore's. St. Isidore's? Yes. And is that a very big parish, a small parish? How, how long it's, have you been there? Uh, so I've been there for two years. The bishop assigned me a couple years back. Uh, I've been there since July 1st, 2021, wow. and I'm um, the pastor there. And uh, they, we have about 4,000 families. We have a pretty big school. It's a double school, so about 600 kids. And uh, yeah, it's the summer th time, so things are a little bit more quiet. People are on vacation, so it's a chance to just kind of catch up and come and visit you guys. Yeah, well you're, well, you're busy and you're super busy. We know you're super busy, but you've always been very gracious and, and come by the cathedral uh, to give us a hand as needed, like this week when Father Brandon's been out. And so we really appreciate your, your doing it. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it, it's a real joy to serve with you, of course. Sure, uh, absolutely. I've, uh, I, I think I've served with you, I don't know, maybe half a dozen times or so. Uh, I remember when I first met you, I go, it's a young guy. Uh, but then I found out well, you weren't that you. young. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Father Brandon and I go way back. Uh, right. We met each other as seminarians. So I, anytime I'm able to um, help Father Brandon out, definitely willing to do so. Actually, his um, seminary in Rome was the seminary I ended up going to. And then my first parish was the parish that he was, he was leaving, at, right. Holy Spirit in Fremont. And then the, per, the first time I was a pastor was at the parish where Father Brandon was first pastor, Divine Mercy in Oakland. So for a, for a while, I thought I was following Jesus Christ, but it turns out I was just following Father Brandon. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. So. Well, speaking of Jesus Christ, he's got a message for us this week, he does, which is something news. else. About, and the good news this week is don't get stuck in the weeds. Yes, absolutely. Because the weeds are sometimes deceptively good, simple, and complicated all at the same time. Right. And, uh, you know, I was telling you a little earlier the story about my, uh, my gardening, my, my prowess. Uh, I, mean, I actually have zero green thumb, but I went and bought some citrus plants because we just moved here, what, two, two and a half years ago from Miami, and uh, uh, Miami Beach, actually. Uh, and so we, we I went, it's citrus, so I just, it's Florida, California, citrus grows everywhere. So I bought some plants, I don't know, at Home Depot. I stuck them lime trees in this pot. And I'm watering them. My wife thinks I'm terrible, but I'm watering them. She doesn't know I'm watering them. She thinks I'm not. And one day I go out there when I wasn't paying attention for two weeks. And I see these two things about this big just growing out of the, the, these weeds. And I go, oh my gosh, what happened? And I yank them out. And these giant root balls fall out. <laughs> and all of a sudden the citrus plant is like going down. <laughs> And it was a disaster. Oh, it was no. a real, it was a disaster. I've had to repot the thing, clean it. Of course, guess what? I have more weeds now. And you know, I, it's one of those things that, that Jesus talks to us about how, how to sow in good soil and what happens if the weeds show up and what do you do? And he tells us, sometimes you gotta leave them alone. Now, I, I'm not sure I would have left these alone. They were pretty ugly. Yeah, it sounds like they were pretty big. And here's the beauty is we can not only look to the Gospels for the words of eternal life and the good news, but also we could get some great gardening advice, apparently. Amazing. So, <laughs> but Jesus tells this parable in which there's a landowner who has a number of servants who are working on this wheat field, and an enemy of the landowner sows weeds in his wheat field. And ordinarily, when we think weeds, you know, when I think weeds, it's like this an enormous, like, green thing with spikes. It could possibly eat you. It's like obviously clearly distinct from whatever you're trying to grow, right? right? right. Um, but in Jesus's day, actually, there was a type of weeds that would grow with wheat that actually looked, it was called cockle. It actually looked like wheat. And uh, actually, if you had an enemy, one of the ways that your enemy would try and like stab you in the back is he would grow this cockle. He would sow cockle seeds when no one's around in your wheat field. So it looks like the weeds are actually wheat. And actually, if you tried to bake that those weeds in, as you're in your bread, you'd actually get you know, really sick if you like tried to use those weeds in your bread. So it's totally not good. And actually Roman law had like pretty severe you know, penalties against doing something like that. So an illegal thing. Um, so when we think weeds, we think of just like these like gross monstros you know, mo monstrosities that are growing you know, with your tulips. But in Jesus' day, they actually look very similar. And so when the people that are working the field go to the master and say, should we separate them? Should we try and pull them out? The master says, don't. Go ahead and leave them. Right. There will be a time when it'll be, it'll be we'll good be to be know. able to separate it. We'll know. They'll, we'll know that time to be able to That's separate right. it. That's yeah. right. And it's interesting because here Jesus is talking to us about, about leave, leave it alone. Mm. And, and what a metaphor for us as well, right, of, of who we are. Leave, leave it alone in, in time. 
in time we'll, we'll know the difference. Mm. It's almost the same metaphor apl applicable to, to us human beings, that, that we all kind of look the same. It's like that cockle and the wheat that you say, that you know, that you were describing, that, that they look very similar. We all look very similar. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Jesus is telling us, leave it alone. Don't weed them out because we don't know what's there yet. And you might make a mistake. You might make a mistake and take the good wheat and throw it away or burn it, yeah. which is really what would happen. And, uh, and I think that's what God does for us. He, Jesus wants us to be ready for him. At our pace, sometimes a little later than we should be, yeah. but he's waiting for us. Yeah. And, he, and, he, and, he, and he will work with us on this. His redemption, his mercy, his love, it's, it's there. And that's part of, the, part of the story that he's putting out, you know? Yeah. And so. That, that, yeah, just the field being almost kind of like an image of our own soul, world. right? And yeah. I just think of that just in my own life. I was like, yeah. Lord, I have all these different weaknesses. I have um, these sins in my life, this brokenness. I wish that you just like come in, swoop in, just like remove it Clean all. Clean it out. I'd be perfect all the time. Everybody loves me. I'm just this wonderful person at all times. And the reality is, no, there, my, my soul is just like that wheat field. And right. there are ways that I imitate Christ. There are virtues. There's ways that I'm receptive to grace and I'm doing God's will. And then there are just aspects of my life that are broken and deformed and really need a lot of mercy, probably in ways that I don't even, that's the crazy thing is probably in ways that I don't even realize it yet. Okay. Other people that have to deal me on, on a day-to-day -day basis, they know, they could point it out, <laughs> right? But like, man, I don't even see it. And so the, the patience of God who sees it all and waits. And he waits, and he waits. But, but the interesting thing is that he doesn't come in and He's not like the surgeon that comes in and, you know, clears your arteries with, you know, whatever little device. He's not there for, to clean up your heart that way. Mm. He's there to clean up your heart by just being present in yeah. your life and letting you understand what he wants, how he wants it. He wants to allow us to achieve that grace that, and to feel his love and br bring us closer to yeah. clean ourselves up because it's really up to us in many ways. In many ways, it's up to us to recognize that we are in need of conversion, redemption. We need his love. Yeah. But we have to remember that we need that. It's funny, uh, this, uh, this concept of turning to God, you know, and, and turning to God uh, more and more in your life so that you can weed out all of this stuff that, that drags you down, yeah. that makes you not so good. Uh, you know, we're thinking of this, this young woman, uh, not young woman, she's 62 years old, who just passed, a good friend of my wife's, uh, a Sephardic Jew. Uh, we've known her forever. She and my wife knew her for almost 50 years. I've known her for 40 some years. Uh, and she passed this past weekend. Uh, she had battle with cancer. Uh, and, 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 and here she was, uh, the rabbis telling us how all of a sudden she knew, she knew the end was, was about to start coming. Yeah. And how she began to turn ever more forcefully and more clearly to God and, and, and how her life uh, began to take on a different meaning for her, you know. And, and as she was getting ready uh, and goes into hospice, uh, you know, he walks in and, and she hears his voice and she opens up her eyes. And all of a sudden she passes, you know, between Friday and Saturday, right mm -hmm. in the middle of, of Shabbos, right? And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and, she, and she goes, uh, a very holy time uh, for Jews. Uh, fast forward, her funeral was on, on Sunday, and, uh, and my parents live right next door to her, so they know, they know her very well. Uh, they've known her forever. Uh, and, and all of a sudden, they see at 5 o'clock, about an hour after the, the funeral, they see somebody approaching their door, and they recognize him as the rabbi who lives just a couple, a couple of blocks away. But they, they know who he is. Uh, they see him once in a while, but they, never, they don't know him friendly, nothing like that. And, knock, and they open the door, and he goes, I don't know why I'm here, but something sent me here mm -hmm. to this door, to your house. And he repeated that several times. And, 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 and you know, the, the beauty of it was that, that maybe our friend turned. My parents were somewhat distraught by the passing yeah. of, of, of Hilda. We were distraught by the passing of Hilda. And so hearing this story brought us great peace. It allowed us to have some consolation. My parents felt great peace uh, uh, when, when they, they can't understand it. They don't know how it happened, why it happened. 
But they said, but, but when, when, when he left us, we just felt at, at ease. Yeah. As if somehow the consolation came in. As if the Lord came in and said, look, we're going to give you an example of something. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you something that, that you, can, you can rely on. Yeah. Because that's what the, the Lord is reliable. The Lord is very reliable. And he, he is there to help us achieve that peace that he wants us all to have. Yeah. Of course, he's going to come in to judge the living and the dead. Yeah. But in that way that you have spoken about, right? That, that you have said he does it in, a, in that perfect justice. Yeah, and he just has that sense of patience, right? You know, thanks yeah. be to God that God is so patient with each and every one of us. I think we're always kind of looking for that quick fix for ourselves, right? right. In like 30 days, I'm going to have this like worked out in my life. And God is so patient. God knows exactly when you need, what you need when you need it, right? That's right. And so to be able to trust that process of healing and growth and holiness on his time. On his and, and, and in that patient kind of way. And when I'm able to receive that mercy and healing in my own life, I think it also makes me a little bit more, hopefully, more like Christ. Right. So that I'm not able to just look at myself and go like, you know, the Lord is bringing about a work of healing in my own life. I can't see all the details, but I can also trust that he is hopefully doing that for everyone. Right. And when I look at other people, when I look at the world, because, I mean, this is the question that people will ask. They ask us a lot as priests, and I'm sure you hear that it's a lot as a deacon. It's like, man, you know, there are so many people out there. Obviously, it's not me. There are so many people out there that have all these problems or are creating problems for our world. They bring evil into our world. And how, do they, how are they allowed to get away with it? That's right? right. Why doesn't God, like, remove all of them or take them all away or somehow smite them? And again, the Lord is in this gospel is just kind of giving us a sense of like, the Lord is so patient with us because he ultimately wants our redemption. Not that we abuse it, no. nor not that we take advantage of it. And I think there is that tendency in the human heart, I think all of us, to take the mercy of God for granted right. and use it for my own end. But that's why every, t every Sunday in the creed, we profess, I believe that Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead because he can judge, like you said, with perfect justice. He's bring about, able to bring about perfect justice, not only for me, but also just for the world. And if I have been harmed in any way by someone else, if I have experienced evil, God knows how to make it back to me in a perfect way. And if someone has perpetrated that, he knows how to bring about perfect justice. We're never really going to have it perfectly in this world. That's right. And as Christians, we walk towards a world where there will be no more suffering, where there will be no more tears, and they will be able to bring about a perfect justice. And so hopefully, hopefully, there is that desire in my own heart for the redemption and the change of other people. That's right. You know, and I, and I was thinking about just this quote that I saw from St. Augustine mm -hmm. when he was talking about this parable. He said, hopefully the weeds become wheat. That's right. And man, I, ho That's I hope the areas of my life where I, I have wheat that, need, that look like weeds or weeds that look like wheat, and it's like, man, I can't distinguish the two of them. St. Augustine's hope is like, you know, that evil hopefully can become good. And those people that are turned towards evil can become good. That's right. And God's mercy can bring about that transformation. Hopefully, I'm not just hoping that just for myself. Hopefully, when I look at other people, I'm desiring that for other people, too. Right. I want to have a heart that looks at other people. and Because sometimes you just kind of write people off, sure. right? You look at someone and you go, I got you all figured out, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you're, a, you're definitely a lost cause, right? You just kind of look at someone and you judge by those appearances. I think we do that to ourselves, but I think we also do it to others. With others, of course. I think the grace that comes from knowing Christ the good news of the gospel is to be able to receive that grace, to be able to say, there's still a possibility for redemption in a way that I can't, That's right. I can't see. And sometimes we do need to be able to bring about some sort of justice maybe here in this world that isn't going to be perfect, but maybe to stop you from doing further That's evil. Right. But I'm going to hope that you can know the mercy of our Heavenly Father. That's right. And, and that mercy, that mercy is, is what that justice is about. It's that, mm. you know, the, the justice that we're talking about is, is enveloped in, in his mercy. And that mercy is so unique to God yeah. because that's his love. Yeah. That's how he, he displays it to us. And, and allowing us to, re, to, 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 to achieve redemption or to find ourselves facing him in a way where we know he is going to give us his love and his perfect justice enveloped in mercy is a tremendous, tremendous hopeful thing for all of us. Yeah. You know, it reminds you of another story. There's a in the parish of Miami Beach, uh, this, this gentleman, uh, uh, Jewish, another Jewish person, and he, uh, there's a lot of Jews in Miami Beach. I think everybody knows, you know, we have Hasidics, we have Sephardics, we have, uh, you know, uh, Orthodox, the whole, the entire spectrum is there. And, uh, and, uh, 
and uh, our pastor uh, at the church over there um, gets a call from this gentleman one day. Uh, a very, by the way, a very successful, you'd know the company he founded, one of those guys, right? And uh, he'd married a Catholic woman. She had been going to mass all the time. He never got in her way. Kids were raised Catholic, but he never had any desire, any hope to be Catholic, to be with her, nothing. He just, he did his thing, non-practicing Jew. And one day he called the pastor and he said, hey, I want to learn about this guy, Jesus. And it was like taken aback, he's in his 70s. And, um, and so the pastor had a meeting with him and they had a couple more meetings. And, and at one point he goes, I want to be baptized. Now he didn't want to get all the sacraments. He wanted to be baptized. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, like, get the foot in the door. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to, you know, what, where are you going with this? And so he gets baptized and, and he starts preparing for the other sacraments. Um, and um, it turns out he gets pancreatic cancer. Um, and he gets all his sacraments, including the sacrament of extreme unction mm. at the very end. And the story had a great impact on me because I said, wow, what a great God we have. He's allowing this to develop yeah. at its own time. Yeah. And here this man ends up, we hope and we pray yeah. and we believe right into the arms of Christ, yeah. into the, to take him into heavenly bliss, yeah. that peace, that joyous peace that, that he promises us. Yeah. that we can taste here from time to time. Yeah. And it's such a tremendous, tremendous image to see his mercy being handed out yeah. in, that, in, in ways like that. Praise be Jesus Christ. You know, as you were talking about that, I was just thinking about the times where people um, might just kind of say like, you know, Father, I, I know someone that's away from the Lord right now, and they're not on a trajectory to come any closer to God, right. the church, and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, what do I do? And I... I always kind of think, you know, you are an instrument of grace in that person's life by your prayer for them and by the fact that you're hoping for them. There may not be too many people on this earth that are praying for them. That's right. You know, the saints, the angels, but you on earth are caring and loving this person and evangelizing them by your example, by the witness of your life. That's right. Um, maybe the, the right word at the right time. But just the fact that you're there in that person's life the Lord's using you. You're an instrument of grace That's in right. that person's That's life. Right. And so when I have the hope that the weed can become wheat, when I have the hope that God can do anything in a That's person's right. life when they're open, when I live on that hope, I can be an instrument of grace for someone who maybe doesn't look like they're moving towards Christ, isn't we? we just but we have don't the hope. Know. We've got that hope. And what does the hope do? It, it brings it, even the hope alone, which is I, I always think it's kind of crazy. Yeah. Even the hope alone brings us peace. Mm -hmm. This. Not this exuberant joy, but this peaceful joy yeah. that allows us to have a life that, uh, that is not just hopeful, but also we pray. We pray because we want to. We pray because we have to. We pray because we want to be closer to the Lord. And that's really the, the message, that the Lord wants us closer to Him, that He's not going to let us just go and get burned down by everybody else with everybody else, if everything goes bad, no, he's going to wait for us. He wants us to be close to him. Yeah. And that's his message in this week's gospel where he says, don't take the field down. Yeah. Leave it alone. That's the message. The message is, I am working in them. Yeah. I am working at it. Yeah. And they are working at it. And they're going to get there. If God willing, they will get there. Don't get lost in the weeds. Don't get lost in the weeds. And that, my friend, is this week's good news. Amen.